Hey everyone, in this quick tutorial I'm going to show you how to build uh, this Maxwell material that you can see on this rotating lightsaber. It's going to be just a single material for the entire model. It will have some metal elements, some rubber, some grime, some plastic parts. Um, and for that we're going to use just the four textures that I exported from Substance Painter. Um, here they are. Base color, normal map, roughness map, and a metallic map. So let's start. Okay, so here I am, and what I've got here is a 3D model, a render cam, and a, just a basic default material applied to the entire model. So we have two main different types of materials. We have a metal, and we have a dielectric type of materials. I would like to start with dielectric, so let's do that. We'll split the dielectric part of the materials into two different BSDFs. One would be carrying only uh, color information, while the other would provide us specular and more of the free nail information. Okay, so for that we're going to connect the um, textures to reflectance zero of our first BSDF. And let's do that. Um, I'll just select my base color and I'll put it like this. Okay, as you can see it's updated. So the rest of the settings for the BSDF that carries only the color are fine. So now let's add another BSDF. Uh, for the gloss. I'm going to name this uh, base color and we're going to rename this um, click it gloss. So in gloss BSDF we are not going to use any reflectance zero information because we're going to use only reflectance 90 which is basically specular and some reflections. For that we're going to attach first the roughness texture um, to show surface roughness variation. Here's the roughness texture. And let's do a preview. Okay, so as you can see, our color information, this one, got blended with our specular information, this one. And together they produce a pretty shiny um, plastic looking result. I mean, looking at this areas, you know, the dielectric areas. Just ignore this, the, the other areas because they're going to be metal anyway. Um, to me that looks a little bit too shiny that I would think it should look like. So to fix that, uh, we can adjust the, the base value of the gloss. Because uh, the way it calculated is in total, for one layer, they're going to give you 100% of the look. So let's reduce that to something like 30. Um, and let's see how it looks like. Looks pretty okay. Maybe if we introduce the normal map, it will help us to define whether we want to tweak it a bit more or not. So let's do that. Let's pause the rendering and go to global parameters and just tick the global bump mapping and select your normal map texture. Like this. Okay, just make sure you click the use bump texture as a normal map and use all 100% of your normal map and click render. So now it starts to look like rubber, although I still think it's a little bit too shiny. I would think it's an old rubber, you know, I mean, it's very old lightsaber, it's like really old. So let's reduce that to something like 15. Alternatively, you can also reduce the, the brightness of the highlights, which is um, this value here, reflectance 90. See, if I remove that totally, there's going to be no highlights at all um, in this area, right? Um, but I want to keep it white because it's plastic or, well, in our case, rubber. It still feels a little bit too shiny for the old rubber, so maybe we could reduce the weight value even more to something like 10. Yeah, that, that looks fine. Okay, um, that's for the dielectric part of the model, right? So what we're left to do is add a metal layer. And let's do that. So for that, I'll add a new layer. Um, I'm going to call it metal. And let's add a mask. So for that, we're going to use our metallic map to isolate the metallic elements from non-metallic elements. Like this. Okay, let's talk about metals. Metals are defined by their roughness and by their index of refraction. 
So let's start with the roughness. For the roughness, we're going to use the same roughness texture as we used for our gloss. Here it is. And for the index of refraction, I'll use a classic um, crow um, type of index of refraction. And since we have a colored metals, like, like here's a yellow metal, this is a little bit darker metal, this is a brighter metal, uh, we're going to use, we're going to texture this channel also like this. And specifically for the metal, because we want to tint the reflections, let's color the, the reflectance 90 channel also. Like this, and just adjust a little bit of brightness. It's a little bit brighter. Here's a base color. Okay. So let's run through that. So that's pretty much it for the basic metal layer. Although sometimes you might find that it's, um, this, the, the metal in Maxwell doesn't look as shiny as it would in Substance Painter. This is because Maxwell has a slightly, to say, different um, engine and different image processing. So if you want to target that look that you have in Substance and bring your Maxwell uh, metal a little bit closer to the type of metal you would have in, in Substance Painter, you can introduce another BSDF with the reduced roughness values to make that metal look a little bit more shiny. Let's do that now. Uh, so we'll duplicate this BSDF like this. And we'll say the lower one is going to be our main BSDF. So we're going to keep it as is. Um, we'll just reduce the, the weight value um, from 100% to something 60. And this one's going to be 40. Well, let's make it 30, 30 and 70, so 100 in all total. And the one that is secondary BSDF, or supportive one, will reduce the roughness um, to like half, roughly. Let's go 45. Let's name it 2. And this is going to be 1, like the main one and the secondary one. Um, and see, it's already updated then. Well, let's just full restart just to make sure that it's um, fully updated. Um, now that we have uh, two different BSDS for the metal, we can still have a really rough um, highlights here, but at the same time, a pretty hot and tight spots right here. Thanks for the second BSDF with a um, reduced roughness value. Also have some secondary reflections here. To me, that looks good. That looks something that, you know, um, Star Wars character would um, appreciate. So that's it for now. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up lights, image-based environment, and tweak your camera settings. I'll see you there. Cheers.